All right, Sean, so this is the unique element of, of this design when it comes to, uh, to R&D automation. So what does this do? Well, this basically, it takes the uh, bottles of the dental implants and puts them into the, uh, the cartons. Okay, so just start cycle, right? Go ahead. So, um, which sounds like a simple thing, putting a bottle into a carton. However, yeah. as you can see here, we're, we're having to pick this bottle up and rotate it in a couple different directions to get it from the you know, vertical to horizontal. So there's quite a bit going on here, actually. So this is something where there's really not an off-the-shelf piece of equipment that does this. Uh, so uh, part of our... Uh, competitive advantages, we're able to take these standard pieces of equipment and integrate a custom piece of equipment to give the customer a, a total solution. Huh. So while, while every single one of your, your designs is, is custom and unique, the thing that I find interesting about your organization is how, even though it's, it's custom and, and everything's a you know, one-off job, your processes are very standardized and repeatable. You think that, that gives you a kind of a competitive edge? I, I do. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're firm believers in not reinventing the wheel. So mm -hmm. over the years, we've learned some processes that have worked on a particular job. Why not repeat those processes for future jobs that made us successful? Um, like you said, everything is custom, but, but our, the process of going through the project is standard. Uh, you know, we, we get a spec from the customer as to what they want, what kind of rates, what the parts look like, what kind of tolerances they're looking for. Um, we, we take that, we sit down with our group and we start brainstorming ideas. How are we going to do this? There's many different ways to skin the cat and put in the bottle in, into the, uh, the box. But what, what's the best way for the customer? What's the most repeatable, what's the most reliable way to do that? And fix, fits within the budget. And from there, it's again, some more standard processes of how we use Inventor to design the, the tools. We've got some um, uh, processes in place with Inventor that um, we, we, we do certain things in a certain order to make sure that the machine's gonna come out correctly, the way we structure our assemblies, the way we structure our data. Mm -hmm. um, and then using uh, the inventor data to uh, communicate with our customers during design review, sending them uh, 3D uh, DWFs of, of the machine so they can spin it around and look at all the pieces of it, uh, sending them um, you know, marked up copies, uh, sending them uh, nice renderings of, of the equipment that we're able to use in the studio pretty quickly, just one button renders. All right, so did you design this machine or? No, actually this was uh, designed by one of our uh, mechanical engineers, Aaron Lane. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, perhaps uh, you might want to ask yeah, him a few questions. Let's, let's meet Aaron. Come on in, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Rob, how's it going? Good, hey, tell us a little bit about this machine and how you used Inventor to, to, to design it and you do a, a virtual design review. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that process. Well, this machine was kind of unique in the sense, I mean, all machines are unique in our say, sense since they're custom, but this one in particular, they had a lot of space constraints. So initially, when it was first proposed to us, uh, there wasn't a lot of room. It's going in a very small building, uh, kind of like a strip mall kind of office. Mm -hmm. And so the big thing that was important to them was that it was tight and compact. And we have a lot going on, as you can see. So the trick was getting that tightness and compactness, making sure we're getting everything done that they want done. And then we had to kind of show them how that was gonna work. You know, and even in real life, if I was to get in here once it's done and, and shoot a video of it, it's difficult to really show all the process. Sure. But the cool thing about Inventor is we were able to kind of turn things on, turn things off such that you can see just one particular area, show yeah. how it's gonna pick a label, place a label, how it's gonna traffic control the inner trays coming in. And the bottle's certainly complex in the sense that, um, you know, we have to rotate it several different directions, make sure it gets placed in the bottle just right. So Inventor was an awesome tool for that. So um, why don't you show us what, uh, what that looks like over in your workstation and kind of walk us through the process. You bet. All right, let's go. Okay. All right, tune in next to see how Aaron utilizes Autodesk Inventor to not only design these unique machines, but repurpose the digital prototype for design reviews and analysis.